The 34th Sunday of Ordinary Time marks the end of every liturgical year. Most importantly, it is the solemnity of Christ the King. The feast of Christ the King was established by Pope Pius XI in 1925 against the deadly influence of secularism. The meaning of secularism is the indifference to or rejection or exclusion of religion and religious considerations. Pope Pius XI was looking at the world around him. And Mussolini was parading around Italy with his girlfriend in ignorance. Hitler was just released from jail and leading his crazy Nazi, Nazi party to power. People everywhere seemed to be losing faith and perspective. The Pope felt he must come up with some sign, some symbol to remind people what life is about and to whom they truly belong. To God the Father. I read a story that might put this into perspective with the final catch. The author stated, I have a recurring dream that plagues me every so often. In the dream, it's the night before a final exam, and I have not cracked a book or attended a class, and will now have to cram all night to pass. A recurring dream can be telling. Maybe there is more to prepare for for the final exam. But not the one for school, but rather the real life final exam, the one at the end of each of our lives. Which brings us back to today's gospel, the scariest in all of the scriptures. It is the final exam, otherwise known as the final judgment. These words of Jesus are only found in the Gospel of Matthew and is the climax of all that Jesus wants to say to each one of us. This is the end of his public ministry and Matthew left the most important for last. Jesus, who is about to be judged by others, is now the judge, the Lord of all nations, the entire universe, not just Israel. This is the first time Jesus refers to himself as king. What becomes clear on my reflection on this passage is that the judgment is not based on sinful versus non-sinful conduct or even on the Ten Commandments, but rather how each one of us pursue the authentic good of the people around us. Love of, neighbor, love of our neighbor becomes explicitly love of God. What comes to my mind is the parable of the Good Samaritan, but not just because the parable explains who is our neighbor, but it opens up the door to the corporal works of mercy as in our gospel reading today. It is in the least of these that stands out. Jesus goes to great lengths to describe them. Jesus himself lived them out and showed us how to do this. The kingdom of God is expressed and realized in the hungry who have been fed, the oppressed who have been freed, the imprisoned who have been released, and the stranger who has been welcomed. In this way, Christ's reign is not only realized, but continues on today. The criterion for this is love, service, and hospitality, which are the measure by which each one of us will be judged. If we do these things, we are already living in God's reign. We are beginning our path to heaven. The gospel also leaves us with two images of Jesus, the shepherd who cares for his sheep and the king who judges good works and transgressions against the father. These two images seem to be contradictory, yet that is who our God is, a God who loves each one of us so deeply and provides for each one of us, yet, just like a loving parent, calls us to accountability 
for our actions, for what we do or we fail to do. The final criteria of love forces us to look at our own lives and explore the question, do I love my neighbor as myself? Do I love God above all else? We must examine our lives to make sure that we are taking care of our neighbors as well as the strangers in our lives who need our help. The second criteria of service forces us to look at our lives and ask the question, am I serving God as he is calling me to serve? Am I failing to try when the task seems to be too daunting? We must remember that nothing is too difficult for God and he does not ask us to do the impossible. All things are possible with his love and help. The final criterion is hospitality. The question we must ask ourselves is, how do I live a spirit of welcome in my life? How am I a person of welcome by what I say and do? At the final judgment, everyone will be judged the same, believers and non-believers. Today, today's gospel reminds us that the reign of Christ, his reign is that of feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, clothing the naked, visiting the imprisoned, sheltering the homeless, visiting the sick, and burying the dead. And these are the seven corporal works of mercy. So where is Jesus Christ supposed to reign? Of course, first in each of our hearts. So it's important to note that today's celebration is only meaningful if we personally permit Jesus to reign in our lives. If Jesus would reign in every person's heart, then his reign is in our world today. If he is already there, then rejoice and celebrate. If by chance you may have fallen short, then ask him today to come into your heart, your soul, and to reign in there. For Jesus has told each one of us, I stand at the door waiting. If you open the door, I will come in to eat and dine with you. Revelations 3.20. Remember, the door only has a handle on the inside. You are the one who must open the door and let our, joy, our, our Lord Jesus enter. In conclusion, if we cont as we continue with the celebration of Christ the King of the universe, let us permit him to be in total control of the kingdom of our heart and soul. I firmly believe if we make Jesus the king of our lives, we shall lack nothing, and surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell peacefully in his Father's house when our time here on earth is done. Amen.